Good morning guys. Here we are with another round of SpaceX updates. Yesterday, we witnessed the first ever static fire of Booster 9 after SpaceX implemented several upgrades and changes to the launch pad. While the static fire appeared clean and smooth, many remain skeptical about the test results. In this video, we'll explore the positives and highlight areas SpaceX needs to address promptly. Firstly, one major success for SpaceX during the test was the water-cooled steel plates deluge system, recently installed. Based on our observations, no abnormalities were detected on the pad, and no damage was evident on Stage 0's components. The water deluge system performed exceptionally well. Comparing yesterday's static fire of B9 with B7, the difference is clear, B9 was less dusty and much steamier, which is positive. The issue of flying debris seems to have been resolved with the steel plates. Although the engines were operated at only 50% of their maximum power, I am confident the water deluge system will effectively dissipate heat during liftoff. Moving on, the reliability of Raptors came under intense scrutiny yesterday. According to official SpaceX data, initially, 33 Raptors ignited simultaneously. However, four engines shut down prematurely, triggering an auto-abort of the test. Despite its intended duration of 5 seconds, the static fire ended after only 2.74 seconds. The question arises, what led to the abort? Shutting down four engines before liftoff is a concerning issue. A loss of about 10% of total thrust is problematic and unacceptable. Consequently, the onboard computer initiated the test's automatic abort. During the initial integrated flight, the first stage encountered similar issues with multiple engine shutdowns, resulting in thrust loss and a deviation from the intended trajectory. The root cause remains uncertain, but one fact is clear, the Raptors on Booster 9 are Raptor 2s, the same model that powered Booster 7. I wonder if there were engine problems requiring replacement? If so, why proceed with the test? But identifying issues is challenging until tested. Any problematic Raptors can be replaced under the orbital launch mount. With multiple Raptors likely available at the production site, we can anticipate fewer issues moving forward. Starship's Raptor engine is still in development and will undoubtedly evolve over time. Raptor 3 is already in production, and upcoming prototypes may feature them. At this juncture, we anticipate fewer engine-related challenges, considering lessons learned from Integrated Flight Test 1. But many of us are still in doubt if SpaceX will conduct another round of static fire testing or proceed with a launch attempt, potentially risking another setback? Your thoughts on this matter are welcome. Earlier today, the Falcon team successfully launched the company's 53rd mission of the year. Another batch of 22 Starlink V2 mini satellites was launched aboard a Falcon 9 from SLC-40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Two, one, ignition, liftoff. The first stage booster B-1078 completed its fourth successful launch and landing on this mission. Landing light deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Finally, we have some Chandrayaan A3 updates. The spacecraft has officially entered lunar orbit and completed its second lunar-bound maneuver to lower its orbit in preparation for an upcoming soft landing within the next few weeks. Officials have reported all systems to be nominal, and the spacecraft is in good health to proceed further in its mission. That concludes our video for now. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more updates in the upcoming video.